So we go to chapter three, business. Enterprise business growth and size. So what is an enterprise itself? An enterprise is, is a legal entity that possesses the right to start up a business on its own. That's what an enterprise is, a legal entity that has the right to conduct business on its own. That is an enterprise. There is an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is that individual who has, who has taken the risk to set up business with the aim of making profit. That's an entrepreneur. I think you get it between enterprise now and entrepreneur. An enterprise is a legal entity that uh, that possess uh, that possess possess the right to conduct businesses on its own. So those people that are going to use the enterprise are the entrepreneurs. So basically, we could say an enterprise is the office of an entrepreneur. I think it's clear. Yeah, great. So here we immediately go to the benefits of being an entrepreneur. The first one here is independence. For independence, I wrote the ability to choose how to spend your money and your time. That is what independence is about. Here you're going to decide on how to spend your money. Here, here you're going to decide on how to spend your time because you are the owner of the business. You are the entrepreneur there. So, ability to put own idea into practice. When you're working with people, when you're working for people, maybe as an employee, you don't have, you have to do it the way they want it. Do you understand? Yes. Though we have some employees, we call them intrapreneurs, intrapreneurs, but we're not there yet. That is the A levels. So, but right now, as an as an um, employee, you won't have the ability to use your own way. You, you can't do things in your own way, except if it's your own business. So an adva the advantage you have as an entrepreneur is that you can use your ability, your idea, the way you want it. That is an advantage for you. I think it's clear. Sometimes entrepreneur like give uh, that uh, gives the employee like delegation. Delegation, yeah. But delegation is an authority to act on my behalf. So I'm still authorizing you. Oh, you can do this, you can do that. You can't just decide on your own. That no. is the point. Is it clear? Yes. The third point, popularity. That's famous here. Popularity if the business becomes successful. So people like Mark Zuckerberg and the rest of people we know, this is Aliko Dangote. They are successful people. That's why we know them. Their businesses are successful. Yeah. Their businesses are successful. That's why we know them today. So you, could, you, you become popular as soon as your business succeeds. Yes. The fourth point, possibility of any more income than working as an employee. Because it's your business, you, you are, you, there's possibility of you to make more money, to make more income than working for people. Yes. There's no way you want to be richer than your employee. Yes. You get the point there. The, the last one I wrote is about ability to make use of personal interests and skills. As, as the owner of the business, as an entrepreneur, you could use your skills you could you could take uh, you could use your skills the way you want it because it's your business. But most of the time, even employees they they don't want to use all their efforts to work for employers. So, but because it's your job, it's your work, it's your business. Whatever you've got, you put into it because it has to be successful. Yes, do you get the point there? Then, what are the setbacks of being an entrepreneur? What are the problems you could encounter or I could encounter as an entrepreneur? The first one, risk. The business might fail, which means the entrepreneur might lose everything. So risk means that it is uncertainty that might arise in the course of doing the business. It's not certain. You are going to provide goods, or you're going to produce goods and provide services to people who don't know you, to customers who, who only care about the product. So if the business fails to meet the needs of customers, then you might lose all your money. That is yes. why it is risky. Mm -hmm. Is it clear? Yes. The second point, lack of, so, source of sources of capital. As entrepreneurs, all the, uh, the amount of money you're going to invest are basically from you. You might not have any source of fund or source of finance. Do you get the point I'm making here? Do you get it or not? The capital. Lack of sources of capital. Yeah. yeah. As entrepreneurs, you as an, as an entrepreneur, you have to start business with your own money. Yeah, yeah. So, because most lenders, they feel like, oh, entrepreneurs, we can't, we can't, new business, we can't just give you money. They consider you as a high risk. Yeah. You might not have the ability to pay back. They feel that you are not credit worthy. So, as entrepreneurs, you need to use, as an entrepreneur, you need to use your own capital to start the business. You might not have other source of finance. The third point, lack of knowledge and experience. 
sometimes you have the business idea, but you lack, you have the business mindset, but you lack expertise to run the business. But because you lack the expertise to run the business, you could employ an expert to do it. But when you lack the financial capability to employ experts, then the business would fail. So you lack knowledge of the business. You lack knowledge of the business. You lack expertise. And you don't have the financial capability to employ experts. The business will fail. Yeah. You get the point there? Yes. And the last one is about opportunity cost. If you can't be here and be there. So if you have chosen to be an entrepreneur, it means you won't be able to work for other people, other companies, other employers. So you would lose income from that side. Is it clear? Yes. So that's about enter uh, enterprise and entrepreneur. They will go to the characteristics of a, of successful of successful or successful entrepreneurs. The first one is hard working. Just going to go down. Yeah. Hard working. I wrote entrepreneurs must be able to spend long hours at work and also must be punctual. You must always be there every now and then. That is what hard working is about. You have to spend long hours at work and you have to be punctual. Punctual means you have to be there every now and then. Yes. Clear, right? Yes. The second one, the second characteristic of features is risk taker. Putting on ad and savings to the business to produce goods or services for customers. So it's risky, like we talked earlier. You are going to be a risk taker because you're going to put your own hard earned money into the business to produce goods or to provide services for those who don't know know you who don't care about you whether they care about your product or your service you okay. cannot you, you can't force them to buy that is the point there because you cannot force them to buy then it's risky so you're going to put all your money into a business a business that you're not going to sell to your brother you're not going to sell to your family you're going to sell to those who don't know you yeah. So if they don't buy, there's nothing you could do. They don't. They don't need to have empathy for you. You get the point there. The third point: creative entrepreneurs must be able to come up with new business ideas, as this will attract customers. So you have to be creative. You have to be able to come up with new business ideas. Sometimes Is it clear? You want to increase the creativity by merging, right? By merging, like entrepreneur and entrepreneur making a partnership. Oh, yeah, Maja, margin. Too much or too integration. Yeah. It could be a business idea. Yes, it could be. But what whatever we're talking about here is that you have to be able to come up with new ideas mm -hmm. that would attract customers. That is the point. Because if you don't come up with new ideas, you remain the same. Competitors will come and take you off the market. Yes. I think it's clear. The fourth point is optimistic. To be optimistic. Here I wrote entrepreneurs must believe in the success of the business. So failure is not fatal. Anybody could fail. But failure comes up. Failure, it becomes a failure if you, you fail and you don't seem to want to stand up anymore. Yes, yes. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So anybody could fail. Well, it is not like as soon as somebody fails, that is the end. No, you shouldn't see it like that. You should see it as there's light at the end of the tunnel. Yes. That's what optimistic optimism is about. Yes. So as an entrepreneur, you should believe you should believe in the success of the business. Yes. I think it's clear. Yeah. Then self-confidence. Yeah, an entrepreneur must be able to convince stakeholders about their skills and how it could lead to the successful or to the success of the business. Yes. So you must be confident. You must be able to convince your stakeholders, customers, investors, whoever it is that have interest in your business, that this business mindset, these business skills you have, you've got, would lead to success. That is what self-confidence is about. I think it's clear. Yes. Then the, the, uh, the next one, effective communicator. Entrepreneurs must have the ability to speak clearly and confidently, as this might raise the profile of the new business. There's two points. Yeah, I know. I wrote them. This is how I wrote them. Oh. That's how I wrote them. Yeah. So effective communicator, that's what I wrote. Yes. So as entrepreneur, I, I, I said, I wrote, entrepreneurs must have the ability to speak clearly and uh, confidently. Mm -hmm. As this might, uh, this might raise the profile of the business. What we're saying is this, if you are confident enough to speak to people, like, oh, this is, this, these are what we want to do. These are what we can do. And they will believe in you. 
and that might put the, they might start putting trust in your business and that could increase your raise your profile yes. as a business the next one is innovative mm -hmm. entrepreneurs uh, entrepreneurs must be able to must be able to So innovative, right? like I said, entrepreneurs must be able to uh, must be able to come up with new ideas. In, they must be able to put new ideas into practice. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about practice here. Like, oh, we have a, we've got this idea, but you must put it in a way that looks interesting to people. So don't just you just have to be flexible with whatever you do. It has to go in line with the latest trend. That is what we're talking about because every now and then things changes. So you must be able to evolve with the trend, even if you are coming up with new ideas. New ideas is creativity, yeah. Mm -hmm. But being put in, being able to put them into practice, that makes it to be innovative. Is it clear? Yes, yes, yes. Then the next one is independence. Entrepreneurs must have the ability to work without any help. As an entrepreneur, you must be able to do things without waiting for people. You must be able to take decisions without waiting for people. Do you understand the mindset there? So that's all about um, the characteristics of entrepreneur. I think that is clear. Yes. Okay. So we'll go to business plan. Now. So when talking about a business plan, I wrote the business plan is a written document stating the description and overview of a company's future. So you have a business and you need to plan because if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. Mm -hmm. So as a business, you need to have a business plan. And having a business plan means that you have described, you've come up with an overview of how you want your company to, to be in the future. That is what a business plan is about. I think that is clear. Yes. So what are the contents? Of a business plan. Just go down. Yeah, this is, I wrote contents of a business plan. One description of the business. Here we're talking about this implies the summary of the business and its objective. You have to describe the business, the summary, how what your business is about and what you are aiming at. That is description. I think it's clear. The second one is product and service. We're talking about what you want to sell as a business. What services are you providing? What products are you selling? It has to be part of the business plan. The third point is the market. So when we talk about the market, we're talking about the analysis of the market, which includes the type of the targeted customers, which includes the market size, the predicted market growth, and the sales forecast. That is about market. It's about your competitors, how you how your sales forecast is about, what percentage are you predicting to have in that market? Mm -hmm. I think it's clear. Yes. Then we have the business location. For business location and channel of distribution, that's what I wrote anyway. So here I said, this implies to where the business is situated and how it will get to the users. So the, the business is here. How are the products going to get to your final users, which are the consumers? It's part of your business plan. I think that is clear. Yeah. Then we have the organization structure and management. Here I wrote, this implies to the organizational charts of the business and the level of schemes required by each employee. So. In your business plan, you know the kind of jobs you want to do. You know the, you set an objective, and you need to employ workers. You need to employ employees that are capable to help you, are capable to achieve those objectives. So that means, oh, we need this kind of employees. We need this kind of people who've got who have got this type of skills, who have got this kind this kind of experience, who have got this kind of knowledge. Those are the kind of people we want to be able to carry out these objectives. It has to be stated in your business plan. I think it's clear. Yes. That's about organizational structure and management. Then financial information. This includes the projected financial statement. We're talking about the income statement and the, and the statement of financial position, the capital, the amount of money that you are investing into the business, the revenue, yes, the yeah, amount of correct. revenue, yeah. If you've got some bank loans and if you have other sources of finance, everything has to be stated. Oh, this is what we want to do. This is how we're we plan to, to you know, 
to gather or to put all this money together. In the return of capital, so you can know. Yeah, these are all about the financial information. Yeah, yeah. They are predicted anyway, because mm. it has not happened. They are predicted. Ah. They are predicted, yeah. Okay, yeah. You get it. And the last one here, I think, yeah, the last one is business strategy. Yeah, I go. this implies to the method intended to use by the business to satisfy customers and increase brand loyalty. We're talking about business strategy. Basically, we're talking about how to meet customer needs. So what are those strategies you are putting in place to meet customer needs? Because if you are unable, if you are unable to meet the needs of customers, you will lose out on customers, you will lose out on revenue, then you are out of business because yeah. the customers are said to be the king. So as soon as you are able to satisfy the, cost, the needs and wants of customers, they will always return. Mm -hmm. That means they will have they they, they become loyal yeah. to your business. Is it clear? Yes. So I think that's all about chapter three. Clear, right? Yes, we are done.